Hi, and welcome to this lesson. Today we're going to introduce some basic definitions related to graphs. Graph theory is probably one of the most common subfields of discrete mathematics. Graphs are mathematical structures that are used to represent the relationships between objects. Mathematically, a graph is composed of a finite set of vertices V and a set of edges E. We can therefore refer to a graph as a couple G composed of V and E. A graph is often depicted using circles for vertices and lines for edges. Some examples. Graphs can be used to represent relationships between family members in a family tree, in which case members would be represented as vertices and their relationships as edges. Or, Similarly, to represent molecule interactions in a biological organism, or neural networks in the brain, hyperlinks between websites, or simply a maze in which cells can be represented as vertices and adjacent cells not separated by a wall can be linked with edges. That's right. There are multiple ways to define graphs. In the simplest case, Edges convey information about which pairs of vertices are connected and which are not. This means that E becomes a set of pairs of vertices. A pair UV is an unordered set that contains two distinct elements, U and V. Considering that they are unordered, the pair UV and VU are identical. The order of a graph is the number of vertices it contains, which is seven here in this example. The size of the graph is the number of edges, which is nine in this example. As you can see, this is a simple, effective way to visualize a graph, but it might also be misleading because the creation of a figure like this requires you to make arbitrary decisions about the coordinates of vertices and the forms of lines. This can be seen in the following example figure, which shows two graphs that appear to be different. However, these two graphs are identical in the sense that they have exactly the same set of vertices and the same set of edges. Graphs were first introduced by Euler in 1736. He was interested in formally proving that no one could walk around the city of Konigsberg and cross each of its bridges exactly one time. To prove this, he showed that starting and finishing at one time would require the graph to contain zero or two landmasses with an odd number of bridges. Since Konigsberg landmasses all contained an odd number of bridges, this route was impossible. In some cases, edges can be directed which means that a vertex U can be connected to a vertex V, even if V is not connected to U. In such cases, edges are made up of couples of vertices, such as, for example, U, V. Couples are more informative than pairs because the order of vertices in the couple is meaningful. For example, the couple U, V is distinct from the couple V, U, if U and V are distinct themselves, whereas the pair UV and the pair VU are identical. When using couples, graphs are known as digraphs. We will only consider graphs whose edges are pairs in this course, but it is worth pointing out that the algorithms presented here do also apply to digraphs. As in the previous examples, it is preferable to index vertices from 1 to n, which is the order of the graph. When vertices of the graph are indexed appropriately, an alternative way to represent a graph is to use a matrix. The adjacency matrix of a graph is a matrix with as many rows and columns as the order of the graph. The adjacency matrix is built by putting a 1 at line i and column j if ij is an edge, and putting a zero otherwise. Here is an example of a graph and its corresponding adjacency matrix. You should note that the adjacency matrix of a graph is always symmetric. Adjacency matrices can be generalized to take values other than zeros and ones, which allows 
weighted graphs to be defined. Weighted graphs are particularly useful when edges represent distances or delays between vertices because values in the adjacency matrix can be used to indicate the corresponding quantities. To take an example, a weighted graph can model the distances between major cities in the US and connection weights can be used to represent these distances. As well as distances, weights can be used to represent occurrences, proximities, relationships, and so on. A path is an ordered sequence of edges that are distinct from one another and is obtained from a sequence of vertices by joining any two consecutive vertices in the corresponding edge. The two extreme vertices of the sequence are called the extremities of the path. Take a look at this graph. In this example, v1, v2, v2, v6, v4, v6, v3, v4 is a path, and we've obtained it from the sequence of vertices v1, v2, v6, v4, v3. Paths are often confused with walks. A walk is a sequence of vertices such that any two consecutive vertices form an edge in the graph. The difference is that, in a path, an edge cannot appear twice. For example, v1, v2, v4, v2 in the previous graph is a walk, but the corresponding sequence v1, v2, v2, v4, v2, v4 is not a path because of the repetition of the edge v2, v4. A cycle in a graph is a path in which the extremities are identical. For example, in the previous graph, v2, v6, v4, v6, v3, v4, v2, v3 is a cycle obtained from the sequence of vertices v2, v6, v4, v3, v2. The length of a path is the length of the sequence of edges. For weighted graphs, the length corresponds to the sum of the weights. If there exists at least one path linking two vertices u and v, then there exists a shortest one. Most of the following lessons will be spent learning how to find the shortest paths between two vertices in a graph. Finally, a graph is said to be connected if any two vertices are extremities of a path. All the example graphs we have considered so far are connected. Here is one that is not connected. Some graphs are very useful because they can appear in many situations. For example, we encounter trees all the time, in file systems, in genealogical graphs, in sports competitions where tournaments are often depicted as trees, and so on. Trees are connected graphs that are cycle-free. Note that trees are often confused with rooted trees, in which connected vertices have a specific relationship with one another. Rooted trees can be defined by choosing one arbitrary vertex to be the root of the tree. Another example of a standard graph is a complete graph. A complete graph includes all possible edges and is often a good choice to test the abilities or the computation time of an algorithm that operates on graphs. Mazes can also be represented as graphs. In this case, vertices can be used to represent the cells of the maze and edges can be defined as neighboring cells that are not separated by a wall. Thank you for your attention. I have really enjoyed talking about graph theory with you today. <laughs>